Hello and a warm welcome to my YouTube channel where I try to cover stocks and derivative data on a daily basis. Now in this video, I've got to you Berger Pains, an outlook of the stock from a long, medium and a short term point of view. Now Berger Paints is India's second largest paint company with a market cap of 66,600 crores approx. Its return on capital employed is 23.8%. It has very low debt and zero promoter pledge. The promoters hold 75% of that. The Indian promoter is the Dingra family who owns 60%, while the foreign promoter part is around 15%. FIIs hold a healthy 10.85%. Mutual funds have 1.05 odd percent, while the public owns around 14% of the stock currently. Now, let's have a look. Uh, now that uh, we know about the company, let's have a look at the charts and try to decode what lies ahead. Before I go into the charts, just a reminder for those who want to learn harmonic trading patterns, Ichimoku, trade, this trading discipline, risk management, and a lot of other features. My courses are available. You get video recordings plus PDF, and you get hand-holding in which I guide you through all your queries, your doubts, and even clarify your interpretation, whether you are doing it correctly or not. There are videos which run into three hours plus and several videos covering every part of every trend, uptrend, downtrend, sideways market, breakouts, breakdowns, pullbacks, triangles, everything is covered in the studies and with lots and lots of examples for each scenario. So it's a, it's a way of learning of first the theory part, then the practical part of showing it to me, whether you're doing it correctly or not. And then finally, your own uh, evaluation and your own trading and investing with that continues. For those who go with the mind and management trading, psychology risk uh, uh, management classes, they get 10 live one to one sessions with me in which on every day, I cover different aspects on ways to reduce risk, to identify strength and how to stay away from weakness and how to work more and more on our trading discipline. Now let's get on with the charts. Now Berger Paints uh, got listed in the year 1999 uh, in the NSC. That's from where the data and trading view is. And from there onwards, which had a phenomenal run. Now as for Ichimoku, you can see out here that the stock has uh, once it took, took off from 2010, it has never ever broken the Ichimoku baseline in the quarterly charts. In fact, you know, everybody compares that Asian paints, of course, Asian paints in terms of market cap and growth size is much bigger, but in terms of compounded annual growth rate, that is the CAGR, Berger paints, if you had invested on 1st January 2000, and uh, even Asian paint simultaneously on the 1st of January 2000. Then in the span of 23 and a half years, the CAGR of Asian paints is at 25.4, while that of Berger is at 28.1. So it's actually given a much better return than Asian paints. Uh, but yes, in terms of market cap, much smaller company. Now, let's have a look at the monthly charts of Berger Paints and try to analyze what is happening out there in the stock. Now, in the monthly also, we can see that uh, right from that 2010, that even though at select times, very rarely has it broken the baseline and uh, gone down to the cloud only once and which has happened exactly this year in May 2022 from where it has come and now taken support at the bullish cloud uh, out here future cloud remains bullish and as per Ichimoku and uh, this was the first stage which resulted in a slightly bigger pullback compared to what has happened in it for the last uh, 12 years we can see some correction out here initial part of its big rally from 2010 and after that 
uh, the corrections keep getting smaller a little bit of volatility between 2017 and 18 and then a sharp move one of covid lows crash which also did not breach below the monthly baseline on a closing basis but here we have so now we can see the stock is at a resistance of the baseline near uh, 700 or 697 700 is the monthly baseline resistance for the stock now let's have a look at what the weekly is suggesting to us out here now in the weekly interestingly we can see that the stock from that decline it started in may 2022 was making lower lows out here continuously we've seen uh, lower lows and lower highs non-stop lower highs and uh, from the lows of march it has slowly started rising again now trying to break above the weekly cloud out here with a full bullish future kumo also out there which is uh, which would give it more momentum and strength now even if i don't look at it from an ichimoku perspective uh, and just look at it from a mere uh, simple classical uh, technical analysis then you would notice that if it manages to breach above and sustain above this last lower high of 700 and zero then it would negate that bearish pattern which has been on uh, you know for the last one year or and we could see a sharper upward directional move in in this case from here onwards like that towards so the first major resistance like you know we can also see that that resistance is also right now the monthly resistance. So a cluster resistance around 710, which is trying to prevent it from growing up. Once it reaches above that wall, it will try to push its way all the way to probably to 700, uh, 75, 800, and then maybe towards an ATH of uh, 950, 1000, etc. Very much possible in the medium to long term. In the extreme short term, yes, this is a wall. We would like to see it broken on the other side. If by any chance it fails to push its way above from here, then there could be a possibility of a pullback all the way down to 650 odd where it has got a good weekly support. Now let's see what the daily time frame is also suggesting at this level. We had a a uh, bearish candle out here today and uh, some pullback uh, possible where the again the support in the daily time frame is near 675 looks like a solid support base 675 to 670 looks like in case there is a decline till there now uh, before i go to the hourly let's have a look at what the open interest in futures and options is telling us now, the stock is not extremely liquid in options, but what I can see of the July series with just three more trading uh, sessions to go, that the 700 and 690 call over is pretty heavy, even though we saw long unwinding today in the uh, you know, 690 call, but there is no put, uh, not, not too much of put activity to call it a major support, but with three days to go, let's uh, look at what is the uh, overall scene in the August expiry if there is any uh, data which is there. It's not an extremely liquid option chart, but uh, let's have a look at that data also. Yeah, as, as expected, there's not too much of OI buildup. We have a 700 call OI, which is quite high compared to the put uh, additions today. And after that, straight at 750. Put is at 650. There's some put OI out there uh, which could act like a strong support in case the stock drifts downwards. Now, let's have a look at the future buildup of the stock and see what happened out there today in the future buildup. 
merger paints last five days we can see a two percent rise uh, with a 14 percent oi change which is quite steady uh, for the stock but today in that half percent fall we're seeing 11 percent again oi addition taking place so in the daily time frame this is like a fresh shot and in the five day this was making a fresh long but not too much of an oi comparatively for five day period so not too much of clarity with slight bearishness that's probably also due to what we saw in today's candle but we must also keep in mind this is the last week of the settlement and there will be a lot of wild fluctuations in daily oi changes as rollovers take place now let's go back to the charts and try to decode the hourly and daily and supports and then try to analyze it now in the hourly uh, the candle today almost went and you know till 315 breached the baseline support out here at 685 last 15 minutes is uh, i don't like to consider that factor so if it continues to you know tries to bounce back here then we could see some kind of a triangle formation else you know failure to hold the 685 pulls it down to 680 or uh, to 670 based on the uh, today's oi change and overall uh, no support in the put side so early so we should be looking if there is a slippage then it could come down to this level that's where the major 680 and 670 is what the hourly and the daily are suggesting at the <coughs> current moment failure to hold this 675 odd level to 665 would then yes pull it all the way down to 650 so keep in mind these uh, levels 675 660 uh, and then all the way down to 645 50 where it can consolidate and again start a bigger now if it is supposing it starts pushing its way up then in my reading like i said that it needs to sustain above 710 out here break, break this lower high lower low uh, structure and then an uptrend could get stronger and stronger which could take it like i said towards uh, 800 and a lot more possible in the medium to long term overall a strong stock history showing us in the quarterly charts and monthly charts that dips are being bought very heavily by uh, smart money and we know the kind of percentage exposure FIIs have on that stock. We know that the company is on very low debt uh, and the promoter pledge is uh, zero in it. So overall, a good uh, foundation. Uh, one could look at SIPs or breakout structures or pullbacks and uh, trade. However, a disclaimer, this is not a trading advice. It's a uh, educational video based on Ichimoku and classical patterns. And uh, one should look do their research thoroughly before taking an attempt to trade or invest in it. And always, always keep in mind the risk you take in a trade and always uh, respect that risk strain stop loss accordingly. I hope you like this video. So please do click on like, subscribe to this channel and also share it. Until then, happy investing everyone.